I know I said Santos would be on today uh, for Tim Ford Tuesday, but I've got a few more things to do on that video before I can release it. So today I have found another interesting theory regarding Earth. Not that it's flat, the people propagating this particular theory do think the Earth's a sphere, but they also think that it's expanding. <laughs> Hello all and welcome along to another episode of Tin Foil Tuesday with me, Simon Dan. Thank you very much for joining me. Before we begin today, a huge thank you to the sponsors of today's video, Surfshark VPN. Surfshark is a VPN service that makes online privacy protection easy and attainable, encrypting all internet traffic sent to and from your devices and ensuring that your IP address remains hidden to make sure no one can see what you do online. On top of that, they block ads, trackers, malwares, and phishing attempts, and unlike other VPN services, you can use it on as many devices as you want simultaneously. In a world where you spend more time online than sleeping, it's quite obvious the internet knows a lot about us. And that's precisely why we should care about our online data. Use Surfshark to encrypt your personal information and send it via a secure VPN tunnel so no one can see without your permission which is perfect for things like protecting your ID. ID theft is an increasingly common and scary crime. Use Surfshark and its hack lock system to get alerts anytime your email address or password is compromised. Hacklock scans various databases of leaked information and notifies its users if their data is found so they can take action. Click on the link in the description uh, or visit surfshark.deal slash simandan and use the code simandan to get a whopping 83% off and three months extra free. Right, back to the Lay's video, which is looking at a theory regarding an expanding Earth. Now we're gonna sit down with an expert by the name of Liberty Warrior, and he's gonna talk it through for us. Away you go, buddy. Hi, Liberty Warrior here. Um, I haven't done a video for a while, um, so I thought I, I I'll do one, because I was um, I had my mate, he, he, he told me about expanding Earth theory, um, that the uh, which is a theory competing with. Well, science has disregarded it, but it's a, a theory that was competing with the plate tectonic theory. Yes, in the early twentieth century, they were competing theories. However, since then, we've been able to determine that plate tectonics is the correct theory. Now, we can actually use paleomagnetic data, and with this, we can determine that the Earth was actually slightly larger by around 2% 400 million years ago. And we can also image lithosphere fragments that have subducted below a neighboring plate. Now, this is just two examples of how we know that plate tectonics is a thing and that the expanding Earth theory is not a thing. Um, it's, been around, it's been around quite a while, actually. There's a good video uh, of this dude who's done a lot of research. He's an older dude back in the 30s or 40s or where I don't know how old it was, but I'll link the video down. Gives you a lot of insight into it, but basically uh, they came up with plate tectonics theory, um, drifting uh, continent continental plates, because when they there was a few reasons. One of the reasons that they, they could see the the planets look like they joined together like a jigsaw puzzle. Yes, the best example of that being the South American plate and the African plate moving away from each other leaving new crust in its wake. You can literally see that South America fits into Africa. So they, exp um, and also that there's, uh, uh, where, where they fit, the jigsaw puzzle pieces fit, there's, there's like uh, trees on that side on, on, and on the other side of the, on different continents which are the same. There's animals were the same. Animals used to roam everywhere. So the idea was, was all the continents were in one spot on the earth. The Earth was the same size, and there was water everywhere. And then somehow, this is their theory. Somehow it drifted and moved, uh, was floating. And then, then they sort of the, the the lands were going under each other too, and they collided, creating mountains. Hey, when you hear my theory, uh, it's going to blow this one away because this is ridiculous. Is it though? Let's take the Himalayas as an example. The Indian plate is pushing northwards into the Eurasian plate and the Himalayas continue to grow by around one centimetre per year. And this is solely due to the movement of these plates. Now that sounds reasonable to me and not ridiculous at all. Then when they come through, they go under. Somehow the solid crust suddenly will go back under, melt again and go under into the bottom. 
But then that wouldn't that change the shape of the continents and then they wouldn't fit look like they fit together like a jigsaw puzzle? Well, yes, it would. The Pacific plate is pushing into the Australian, Filipino and North American plates, causing serious seismic and volcanic activity at their boundaries. Anyway, there's a lot of problems with the continental drift theory and if you watch that video below, it'll, it'll explain a lot of those issues. I've got the perfect solution. The Earth is expanding. Uh, so it used to be half the size around 70 million years ago. And how big was it when it formed then? Now at that growth speed, we can consider that it was a quarter of the size it is now 140 million years ago. Now, given that we know the Earth is 4.5 billion years old, at that growth rate, when the Earth was formed, it would be smaller than an atom. Um, it's, it, in the last 70 million years, it had a rapid expansion. Um, the Earth... This is how it goes. Uh, it's just a matter of understanding how our planets were formed. In the beginning of the Big Bang, the beginning of the universe, there was just hydrogen, super condensed hot hydrogen. And a lot of this hydrogen came together to form the suns we have. But why just form suns? It, uh, why, not just, why aren't the planets formed in a similar way? Well, they sort of are. When a star is formed, the planets are formed as well. When the sun formed, for example, an accretion disk also formed. This was made of all the material that didn't go on to form the sun. Over time, this disk coalesced at several points to form the planets. I think what's happened at that beginning stage of the universe, when there wasn't enough mass to form a huge sun, it would just form like a smaller little sun, but eventually that would cool and form a crust, molten lava on the outside, so eventually it will cool, which forms the planet. So basically, in the center of most planets is, um, is a sun, is like a sun. If that was the case, we would find planets out in interstellar space not orbiting anything. We don't find that. So, uh, and it had to, that sun had to be there from the beginning of the universe. So our planet in the center of the Earth is like a little mini sun, and it, but it was there since the beginning of the universe. So our planet must be very old. Well, it's old, but it's not as old as the universe, is it? 13 billion is a lot more than 4.5 billion, isn't it? And what happens is compressed gas, when it becomes a solid, you can compress gas, but you can't compress a solid. Uh, compressed gas, as it forms into a liquid, it, it expands. It has to expand, because <laughs> that's what it does. And then when it forms a solid, it expands again. Um, so as... So the, as our Earth is cooling down in the center, it's creating more mass. It's not creating more mass. It's just the mass that's there is, a, is changing from a, from a gas into a liquid and then eventually a solid, which explains how the Earth is growing. Just one problem with that, my friend. The core of the Earth is not a gas. It's a solid lump of nickel iron. And then surrounding that is an outer core of liquefied nickel iron. Now, that's not to say that there's no gas whatsoever in Earth's core, but it's not comprised solely of it. And um, so the mass of the Earth is constant. No new mass has been created. But what's happening is all the elements that we, we have on the Earth are created from the Earth itself. So a lot of the... Uh, in the center, you just have hydrogen fusing. It's a nuclear re reaction, which is creating helium. And then as you go out, it's starting to create more and more. When you get closer to the surface... Uh, water is also being created. That's another thing that gets created. So as it expands, a lot of the water is seeping up and filling the, the cavities of the expansion, creating the oceans. So the water has been created. The Earth is creating the water from the nuclear reaction. Nuclear fusion does not make compounds like water. And also, you need about 10 million degrees C before nuclear fusion can begin. The Earth's core has a temperature of around 5,200 degrees C, way too low for any nuclear fusion to happen. So it, it's a perfect explanation. It really isn't. And you were calling the formations of mountains ridiculous. Um, also, gravity... Uh, the force due to gravity when the Earth was smaller on the surface would be greater... So the force due to gravity was greater 70 million years ago than it is today because, uh, and as it expands, the force due to gravity, the gravity is the same because the mass is the same, but the force due to gravity as you go away from a planet gets weaker. So as the, planet, as the Earth expands, the force due to gravity is less. So we experience a, a lesser force than we did 70 million years ago. 
Total nonsense. You said yourself the mass hasn't changed, therefore the gravitational influence hasn't changed. But more importantly than that, if the size or volume of the Earth is changing but the mass is not, then the density will be changing as well, won't it? And we don't see that in reality. Um, on the Earth. I think eventually what will happen is the Earth, that reaction in there will stop and the Earth will stop growing. So it'll, it'll, it probably has various stages of growth. I think in the last 70 million years it was like um, uh, a, a rapid expansion. I think it might slow down. It, it, we could still be growing for quite a while, but eventually I think it will slow down and stop. We know the bottom of the oceans of the, the waters are no more than 70 million years old, so all the ocean floor is new and it's been created within 70 million years. Again, total nonsense. There are areas of Pacific Oceanic crust that are up to 200 million years old. Whereas the, uh, 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 the land is billions of years old. Um, so I think that's, that's my explanation. Um, I think I've covered everything from these points here that I wrote down. Uh, yeah. So that's it. So the centre of the Earth is, is basically a sun. It's compressed gas, this highlight now. It's pre compressed gas. As it cools, it forms a liquid, hot liquid, and it expands. Because you can compress gas, you can't compress a solid. Well, it's not a solid yet, it's a liquid, but, you know, it's expanding. So new, so the Earth is creating new lava, basically, and, and it's pushing out the continents. If you, want, if you look at that video below, you will see uh, a very good reason why plate tectonics is just a rubbish theory. It's just stupid theory. Um, it doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Well, that's a ridiculous thing to say because of course it does. And we've gathered enough evidence now to be able to confidently say that plate tectonics is a thing. Your expanding Earth theory doesn't explain the formations of mountains, the new oceanic crust, volcanoes or earthquakes. For example, why do we never ever ever get or rarely get major earthquakes here in the UK? If the Earth is constantly expanding, there should be earthquakes everywhere, should there not? It might, just might have something to do with the fact that we here in the UK are smack bang in the middle of the Eurasian plate. What a really, really poor explanation of a theory that has long been since discarded. What did you all think? Did Liberty Warrior do a good job on that one? Let me know in the comments. Well, I certainly don't think so, uh, but for now, that is a wrap on another Tim Fall Tuesday and we're all done and dusted. Thank you so much for watching today. It's truly appreciated. If you enjoyed this particular video, please do consider subscribing to the channel. We really are close to half a million now. And of course, if you really liked it, hit that like button too. It would help enormously. Just enough time to once again thank Surfshark for sponsoring today. Remember, visit surfshark.deals slash Simandan and use my code Simandan to get a whopping 83% off or three months extra free. Alternatively, click that link in the description. I've been Simon Dan. Have yourselves a cracking week. And I'll see you all on Friday for the third part of how I would debate David Weiss. See you then. <laughs>